Hello, my name is Tandy Banks. I'm an elite application engineer for Go Engineer. And today, in this quick tip, I want to discuss some of the great functionality that we have in the SolidWorks add in called routing. So you can see here, SolidWorks routing add in is turned on. Routing is included in the SolidWorks premium package and also can be uh, purchased as a standalone add in for SolidWorks Professional or SolidWorks Core. Whenever you install SolidWorks, and specifically routing, you get a folder added to the design library. Inside there we have the electrical components, some tubing, some miscellaneous fittings, as well as the piping folder. And I'm going to focus in on that piping folder today, making a little quick piping spool. The easiest way to, to get a route started or a spool started is to drag and drop a flange. Now typically I'd have an assembly up here with a, a pump or a motor or something that I'm going to and I drag that flange onto there. But because I want to focus specifically on my pipe spool today, I'm just going to drag and drop that out onto my origin. And whenever I do that, uh, I need to select which configuration that I want to use of that flange. And you can see here we have a lot of different configurations of flanges. But I'm going to start off with the 300 pound 4 inch. And the SolidWorks routing tool asked me to uh, to verify or to make any changes to, to my standard. I'm going to accept those standards today. Go ahead and move forward. And whenever I do that, SolidWorks puts a little um, line out in my 3D sketching environment that's going to represent a stub or a piece of pipe that's coming out of the flange. I'm going to continue drawing lines. And as I do that in the 3D sketching environment, routing is automatically going to add fillets to those lines. Come in here and add a few dimensions to get the uh, size of our route going correctly. You can kind of see those lines changing from blue to black as we're making those changes. And on the back side of this run I want to add a reducer. So I come over here to my reducers folder and we have eccentric and, and concentric reducers. And as you drag and drop those fittings off onto the sketch lines, you'll see that it recognizes the size of pipe that you're running. So in this case, I'm running 4-inch pipe. So it only gives me the fitting configurations associated with 4-inch pipe. I'm going to downsize that to a 4x3, I'll maintain a schedule 40, and now the pipe stub sticking out that end is going to be 3-inch. I'm going to finish that off with another slip-on flange. Drag and drop that off. Again, it recognizes only the sizes that are pertinent to uh, what I'm doing in this specific setting. Finish that uh, last piece off with the dimension. And we'll make a design change over here. So there's a lot of times where we don't have a standard fitting that um, needs to be represented in our spool where, where we need to create a penetration or, or a a branch coming off. And so what I can use is my regular line tool. I can draw a line up from that segment of the 3D sketch. And whenever I drag and drop a fitting onto that, it gets to choose its size. So I'm going to run a 3 inch, or excuse me, a 300 pound 2 inch branch here. And whenever I do that, notice how that line now understands that it's supposed to be a 2 inch piece of pipe. Simple right click on that connection. I can choose the penetrate option and now whenever I exit the sketch you're going to see that all the pipes have been formed and we've even got a nice penetration that's been formed right here on our very first run in our branch. So between the 3D sketching as our, as our skeleton or our roadmap, and then the drag and drop functionality with our fittings including flanges the SOLIDWORKS routing tool makes very quick and easy work of our pipe spool designs. My name is Tandy Banks and I hope you've enjoyed this quick tip about SOLIDWORKS routing. <laughs>